usually when we start off, I, I'm just reading this the chat here. Um, usually we leave it muted for five minutes. We let people join in because we're also on IG Live. If you guys, you know, some of you guys have noticed, I get to see someone, someone in here is uh, giving directions. Thank you guys for trying to make everyone aware. But yeah, so usually we'll just let five minutes roll through, roll by, uh, letting people join in, and you know, as we're making more people aware. So we're gonna get right into it. Uh, Angel's getting set up. Do you want me to start off? Or you wanna, you wanna start? Yeah, real quick. Um, you know, a little bit about what what actually is the Sunday Market Blitz. Mm -hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory. You know, we obviously want to, we do our analysis. We post it in the Discord and the Telegram every week. Um, and then we want to come on here, you know, share what we've, what we've analyzed with you guys, go over all the major pairs, all the minor pairs. And uh, yeah, just talk through. We're basically just forecasting ideas. We're just forecasting ideas. Uh, this will be recorded. You know, the whole thing can be rewatched. And uh, yeah, if you rewatch it later tonight, that's fine because we base all of our analysis on the higher time frames. You know, we're pretty much swing traders. If you want to break our analysis down into lower time frames, you can. Um, but yeah, so this analysis will be good. You know, for today, tomorrow, you know, as the market's yeah. change. But yeah, Nick, you can, uh, the week. Exactly. You, can, you can pretty much get into it. I'm gonna stop. Sure. Sharing. So as as Angelo said, this is a premium service, usually for our members only. Um, you know, it used to be started off. Oh, wait, where am I? What is this? Uh, so usually we start off just going through our pairs. Why is this doing this? Yeah, you're good. I see DX You see, oh, you can see the chart. Okay. So yeah, it's usually a premium service. Uh, this week, this Sunday, you know, we're, we're letting everyone join in. It's a public webinar right now. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll drop down. We'll go through and analyze. You know, I'll go six or seven pairs. He'll do six or seven pairs. And uh, we'll analyze on the daily or four hour, wherever we see the most setups or, you know, potential plays for the week ahead. We'll make all our members aware. We'll update them. We'll post them. And uh, yeah, so it's, you guys can learn from this is also, and also get an idea of, you know, how we're setting things up for the week. So the, like the weekend is so great for, you know, analyzing the markets. There's no pressure. It's not live. And uh, I kind of, this is the time to kind of get ahead of the market and really understand all the potential setups that could uh, happen during the week. So I'm going to start off on DXY as I normally do. And again, this is the dollar index. So I always start off by, you know, kind of analyzing the dollar. I want to see where the dollar could potentially go. Uh, again, it makes up for 80% of all trade in the market. So this is definitely an index to look at. Uh, and I'll use it as an indicator, you know. So, you know, if I think the dollar is going to be bullish for a certain week, you know, everything else kind of follows relatively. So like AU would be bearish, you know, because it's, you know, a AUD, USD, you know, and so on. So USD you know, uh, JPY would relatively be bullish if US, if the US dollar index was bullish and so on. So that's just how I'll use it. Just make myself aware of it. So let's get right into it. So, uh, you know, the dollar index has been very bullish on all significant timeframes. You know, we got the monthly, weekly, daily, four hour. And, uh, you know, despite all this news, this is a large amount of volume. You know, we can still apply our technicals and kind of get an understanding of where this is going, right? Where the dollar is going. So right now we've had this large push. This is extremely speculative, right? This was from news, everyone was panicking, so everyone was kind of holding on to the reserve currency, which is the dollar. And uh, that's what this large push is here, right? So then this is the retracement, pulled back to a, oops, pulled back to a 61.8 Fib level, as well as this monthly support, huge confluence area. As you can see, the MAs are in this area as well. And we did see this price action bounce. So right now, uh, you know, the momentum could definitely you know, keep pushing DXY higher. The dollar could definitely keep appreciating, uh, especially as things start to fall apart across the world. People just want to hold on to the most safe asset as possible. And right now that's the dollar. Again, it is the reserve currency. So just keep that in mind. So in order for me to really say, okay, the dollar, the cap is off. This thing is just going to keep pushing higher and higher. I want to see this structure zone break. So this is a lower time frame structure zone, this blue area here, right where the 23% FIB level is. So if price action gets higher than this, um, you know, it's definitely going to, you know, potentially keep going higher and which is scary because it's not necessarily good when the dollar is super strong. So we could be seeing, you know, a lot of reactions from, you know, the U S uh, the fed, especially, you know, trying to weaken the dollar because as the dollar gets stronger, as it approaches this one Oh four level, you know, other fiat currencies start hurting like really, really bad. So we, this is a danger zone up above one, one Oh three fifty one Oh four. This is, the dollar does not want to be this strong. It'll actually have more inverse effects throughout the globe and uh, other, you know, foreign economies. So 
generally we want to stay below where we are now in between this range, right? Between this structure level and this monthly support. So we could see price action start to bounce. You know, it, this is a big ass range, but we could definitely see it range. And ideally that's what we want to see. We kind of want to see the dollar, you know, find, you know, better ground, uh, kind of be more stable in price action because these swings guys, this swing from 95 to 103, that's just not acceptable. That is not normal market <laughs> conditions by any mean. Right. Causes more causes more damage than good. So again, uh, you know, it could if it breaks this level, it's going up. But ultimately, we want to see that it kind of you know falls back down, stays around, stays below or around the 100 level. That is ideal for us. Okay. So with that being said, let's move along, and uh, you know, let's just start dissecting the charts. So I got AUD USD here. So this is this is definitely one of my favorites for the week. Uh, it just looks super clean. It, it lines up perfectly with our strategy. And uh, so let me just walk through the overall trends that, have, that I have marked here. So all the significant time frames, monthly, weekly, daily, four hour, all super bearish. So this is good because we're starting to see this bearish continuation, right? So I have this daily FIB level marked. You can see here, you know, from the high to the low, high to low, we've marked this FIB. And this four hour bullish trend, we saw push up, hit the 61.8, gave us good rejection. And then started to transition to the downside as the bears in the higher time frame, you know, started to take over, which is what exactly we wanted to see. We want to see this clean transition. And we can see the structure zone is marked right here. So we saw this break, right? Break. We're starting to get these lower highs. This is a great sign. We got the cross of the MAs. We're below the structure level. We're getting these bearish variations, this bearish engulfing time and time again, right? Bearish here, bearish here. This is perfect. This is what we want to see. This is the start of a major move. To the downside for AUD USD. So two potential entries, guys. A retest of this structure level that was broken. Now we're going to test it as resistance again. This would be a nice double top opportunity if it lines up with this prior lower high. You know, if it comes through the MAs and then sharply comes back through with another bearish engulfing, we're entering on that. 10 out of 10 times we're going to take that trade, right? We're going to target lower towards the bottom of this zone. We're going to fill this range, right? That was our first target. And then potentially lower to our you know, our monthly support and so on and so on. So that's one opportunity. If we get that retest, that'd be a good entry. Or if this momentum just stays strong and pushes right through this support, we're just going to look to enter on a lower high on a retest of this zone here, right around 59.50, as you can see, 59.50, right? Let me get a price label just because. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Price label, 59.50. That's what we want to see. Lower high form in this area. With a, again, we just want to see you know variations, bearish variations like we could see here. Let me just drop this a little bit down to 15. Right, we want to see these bearish engulfings, evening stars, rejection of the MAs, exhaustion, these long wicks. We want to see that happening after a break of support, testing as resistance, and then same thing applies. We're targeting the monthly. We're targeting lower support levels. And that would present a really good trade. We're looking at almost 200 pips at our lowest here, at our lower support level around 57,250. And just for shits, let's just see what this would look like if we did enter here. Give you guys a visual, always the best way to learn. So, you know, we would protect ourselves with a good stop loss around 60, 65 pips because it's heightened volume lately. And again, we're outside the lower high. We're outside this resistance. If it were to break, this would become resistance. So we're protected on two levels there, right? The lower high resistance, as well as these MAs we'd be outside of. So three levels of protection. This would be a high probability trade, at least a two to one risk reward. We can see this, this alone at 63 pips to get 180. It's a 2.85. Really good trade. Again, we're taking this 10 out of 10 times. This is textbook for our strategy. I've had a lot of success trading this exact setup on AU, uh, AUD USD as well as some other pairs. So that's the outlook for AU right now. Again, looking super bearish. So excited for this to play out this week. You know, again, we're looking for that retest or that break. So that will be nice to see once that finally plays out. Let's keep moving along here onto AJ. So again, it is relatively similar to AU, right? AUD being the uh, dominant pair in these two. So what what happened here on the daily time frame? Let's talk about that first, right? So we have this huge bearish trend, right? All the respective, all the, all the relative time frames, significant time frames are bearish. And we see that we have this huge bearish trend here, right? It's actually better on the four hour, hold on. 
So we have this huge bearish trend, right? Very, very steep. We're getting these lower lows, lower highs, repeatedly forming great structure, just holding this steep downtrend, right? Until we saw this four hour trend break out. And we had a bit of a bullish trend on the four hour, right? We've got our first higher high, we broke our first lower high, then we're getting a higher low and so on. But we found rejection around the 68 area. So it kind of lined up with this prior lower high, which was like mid trend over here back mid in mid March. So we saw rejection there and then we got a lower high, right? So we're seeing this early transition. You know, what this says to me is that this breakout was not significant enough. Yes, the market broke out of this, you know, major bearish trend, but it's more of just the market taking a breather, uh, more of a retracement to kind of counter this large, large bearish move. So this was necessary in my opinion. And then we started seeing this transition this blue zone here, which was structure, was tested a bunch of times, tested again, tested again, finally it broke, and now we're testing it as resistance once again. So from here, uh, ideally, I would like to see you know, a nice retrace through these MAs to test this level once more, maybe even hit this 38.2. That would be really nice to see, followed by a nice engulfing. So this bearish engulfing you can see here. These variations are starting to present themselves a lot more as the bears take over. So I'd like to see that one more time to give me you know, enough confidence, a nice conviction candle, a nice strong candle, good amount of volume, in which case we would enter on. And then we're targeting towards our monthly support around 64. Uh, it's a good confluence area. Our negative 27% FIB level is there. Uh, and then we'll just manage the trade accordingly. It could come all the way down to this, this zone around uh, 62,850, which is also in line with our negative 61% FIB level. So this could be a really great trade. Again, AJ has the most volatility. It moves the most, you know, out of any pair. So this is like, you know, well over 200 pips, guys. This could be a great freaking trade. Let me show you this here. So let's say we get that, you know, rejection. We get that bearish engulfing. Boom, we're in. I'm going to protect myself. Nice 60, 65 pip stop. I'm going to target potentially all the way down here, right? This should be TP1. This should be TP2. So this is where we're looking to go. Again, this is over. This is 3.0, 3.3 risk reward at 216 pips, uh, and we're risking 65. So this is again, this is a no-brainer. 10 out of 10, I would take this trade. Uh, very in line with our strategy. Oh yeah. Let me just go ahead and throw a trend line in here, just to for shits. I want to see where this lines up. You know, this is looking pretty steep right now. This is. This would. Uh, this actually could fall. We might have not even see that retracement, but you know, again, we're conservative. We want to see the best probability trade. I, I personally would like to see this retracement and then, you know, followed by these bearish setups. Uh, but again, it could just keep dropping, in which case there would be no real trade unless we saw a pullback at a later, you know, let's say no, another lower low forms. Then we would look to get in, get in on another retracement. Uh, but right now we're just waiting to see how it plays out. Again, we're not forcing anything. I'll never take a trade just because I think it's going to drop. I want to see those confirmations. Right. I'm not going to just short this because it looks bearish. There's no way in hell I'm doing that. That's how oh, you yeah. lose money. You, know, you got to have a certain rule set. And my rule is I want to get in, you know, once I see those, that, uh, that retracement with those uh, bearish confirmations, uh, with more confirmations, the better. It'll just better support your trade. And, uh, you know, it'll help you psychologically as well as you'll notice you'll find more success just by being patient. Okay. So this is AJ. This one's looking freaking great. I can't wait for this to play out. All right, let's keep going. I got EU. EU, super bearish. We actually made this call last week. Uh, we shorted on this transition. So this is the four hour. We, sort, we shorted on this transition here, right? This is a little, looks like a little head and shoulders action, but more so just a clean transition. Break of structure, retest is resistance, continuation lower, right? So it's too late to enter now. You can't just short this because like, no one's going to sell when it's low already. Again, the same rules apply. I want a retracement. This is this zone here. This first blue zone is a lower time frame, 38.2. This zone here is lower time from uh, 61.8. So I would like to see a pullback to one of these, followed by, you know, a, you know, bearish engulfing or an evening star, something like that. Let me go ahead and give you a little forecast. Where is this tool? Um, oh wait, there it is. Um, let's just, just show you how steep this trend is. It's kind of overdue for you know, pull back to some degree, right? So that's why we're not gonna, we're not gonna just take that short from here. There's no way in hell we're doing that. 
Uh, I would like to see. I would like to see a pullback. There's no way in hell. Yeah, like, so why would you say that? There's like no at, one front. Go ahead. Yeah, like at the moment, at the moment right now, you know, as prices is, is at a low, we don't necessarily just want to short like Nick said, based on just thinking that we're bearish. No, it doesn't make any sense. That's not trading. That's gambling, guys. That's yeah. what that is. That's like you're you're playing uh playing roulette. You see red pop up nine times. You gotta just short. You're just gonna call red because you've seen it. It's been calling red. No, that's not how it works. You wanna, you know, you gotta have some sort of plan. You gotta have something that makes sense. We have a strategy. You know, I want to see a fib level hit with tons of confirmations. There's no confirmation here other than bearish. You know, you know what I mean. So, I want to see a pullback, or something like this, and it would follow this uh, bar pattern. You can see the silhouette of candles here that I've just mm -hmm. drawn in. So this would be super ideal. Again, there is an opportunity here. Just not yet. So we're going to have to wait on this one. Uh, but again, it is technically still active because, you know, we got in on this transition and we're looking to get down to this monthly. So, you know, let's say we do see this pullback. You know, we would target the same same zone monthly down around uh, 1070, right? So let's say, let's say we hit the 61.8. We get that engulfing. We get that moving average cross. You know, everything in us says that we're going short about 200 pips lower from the 61.8. So what would that look like as far as a you know, a potential trade setup. Oh, where'd it go? You want to see this, All right? We're going to protect ourselves outside of this zone on this lower high outside of uh, key fib level. And we're going to target down toward 1070, like we said. So again, this is a three seven. Uh, you could even move this outside of the 200 EMA, about a hundred pips, call it a 2.0, right? Call it a 2.0 risk reward. And uh, that would be a good trade. All right, we're just looking for those confirmations. We're not forcing anything. I'm just going to be patient with this one and uh, kind of watch this one play out. Oh, yeah. So that's EU, right? Looking pretty good. And I got EJ for you on the daily. Very, another big moving pair. All JPY pairs move quite a bit. Um, this one, the structure is not as clear. But, I mean, again, this huge amount of volume, guys, nothing really – Nothing really that we could enter on. So again, we're being super conservative with this one, especially. Uh, still bearish, right? We still 100. We saw a 100% retracement here, uh, looking like you know it's just been rejecting off this 100% level quite a bit. This was that first break of support, Tesla's resistance once, twice, three times, and now we're down here, very overextended, and uh, we're not looking to enter any trade on this until we see a retracement followed by you know bearish setup. So. The one with the most influence right now, the retracement level with the most influence would be around the 61.8, which lines up right with our weekly. Uh, and given the amount of volume that we've seen the last couple of weeks, this is very, very likely that we'll see this sharp pullback. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll get the opportunity to enter on a lower high. And then, you know, maybe a nice evening star like this here you can see, right? And that would be a nice opportunity to short lower down to our monthly, down to our 0% and so on. You know, well over like almost 400 pips here. Uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy amount of volume. Uh, and that's EJ. So let's keep going. Oh, yeah. I got two more for you, NCAD, and then I'm going to wrap up with gold. Uh, this is best on the four hour. So again, here's the trends. Uh, monthly is looking bullish. However, the weekly, daily, four hour are all bearish. And we're seeing, we're seeing price action kind of fall off from this level. Uh, we're getting a slight transition, this blue zone here, right? So we saw we saw that it held the support. Finally, it broke, retested resistance, and now we're getting these big bearish engulfings. Uh, so from here, I would like to see price action come back up, either test this structure level right here, something like this, anywhere between this zone, this line, the structure, and the weekly, you know, I'm looking to, for a reversal to enter on, right? Something like a nice bearish engulfing. So again, let's get that bar pattern out and see what potentially this could look like something like this in this zone. And then we're just gonna manage this trade once we see that confirmation, target down to our 0 80, 50 zone, which is, also, which is our monthly support. And uh, that's how we'll play this one out. Again, being patient on this, uh, over 300 pips. Guys, the volume has just been insane lately. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, make sure you guys are calculating uh, your positions, especially people in the signals. Make sure that you're doing lot size calculation. Um, you know, how do you do that? Basically, whatever your account size is, you know, risk 
to do 0 0.02 times your account size. So figure out for a thousand dollars, that would be I don't know, like 20 bucks or something. Yeah, and, and use an app called Stinu. Uh, if you need to calculate, it's very good. Yeah, and then you can just divide 20, divide whatever that number is, whatever risk you're, you know, is 2% of your account. Divide that by the stop loss. So 50 pip stop loss, 20 divided by 500. You know, that, that'll that give you your lot size. Um, that's the same thing that Stenu will do. Yep. You can use the app too. Yep, exactly. So there's two ways to do it. Um, this is what this trade would potentially look like. It's a two to five risk reward. Again, uh, this volume is pretty high. So, you know, 120, 120 uh, pip stop loss to gain 300. Uh, that's reasonable if, you know, and the pips shouldn't really scare you. Yes, the volume is increased. It's fine. It's still tradable. You just have to use proper risk management. So as long as you're consistently risking 2%, it's fine. The lot size will be adjusted uh, depending on your stop loss. And uh, you should, this should be a really good trade. You should have no problem regardless of how deep the stop loss is. As long as you have a good risk reward, at least two to one, just that's got to be so key guys, at least two to one. You know, if you're not targeting low enough, then just don't even look at the trade. Or if the trade doesn't make sense, it's not two to one, not worth it. Not worth it at all. This one happens to be worth it. This would be really nice for protected by our weekly structure level, lower highs, MAs. I'm loving this trade the way it's looking so far. And uh, you know, I'm ready to capitalize if I see those confirmations from this level. So real quick, I'm gonna wrap up with gold. On the four hour here, so it's super bullish. It's been bullish on all higher time frames, but you know, where could we potentially see an entry from here? I'm not like, there's a lot of indecision, right? A lot of wicks, a lot of dojis in here. I'm not really liking the way this is, this is setting up. I want to see more of a pullback. Uh, we did see this 38 two hit, which was really great. We kind of, we called that from an analysis last week. We said that it was kind of, we wanted to see a pullback to a, a fib level. It did after this consolidation here it did, it gave us this nice bullish engulfing through the MAs you know, looking like it's pushing much higher towards a 0% potentially the monthly, which is, which will be our next target. But I do want to see a retest of structure, right? So we established this level right here, the structure level right around, oops, coordinates right around uh, 1596. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys this chart, uh, this uh, price label, label 1596, right? I want to see a retest of this zone followed by a nice, bu nice bullish engulfing or a morning star, something like that. And then we'll just target a higher towards our 0% and potentially even higher towards our monthly up to this 1675 area. This will be a really great trade if we see that confirmation. But for now, you know, we're kind of just waiting, waiting to see what happens. So that's gold. I know some, some people always like to see gold, uh, just to throw a commodity in there. But uh, just a quick recap, we covered DXY, AU, AJ, EU, EJ, NCAD, and gold. That's what I prepared for you guys this week. Also, make sure to check the Telegram and Discord if you guys want to, you know, go through this analysis yourself. Uh, it's totally available for you guys. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, sue me in the chat for Fibonacci. Um, I'm going to drop a link afterwards. We did, we did uh, you know, a couple public free webinars that cover very briefly, you know, Fibonacci, how to place it, 38.2 and 61.8. The 38.2 and 61.8 are, they're levels that are, um, anchored onto the like they're part of the fib right they're part of the fib levels that we used you know so where are you plotting them you can see um, in the webinar you know I'll drop the link for that in the discord after this um, and you can and you can take a look so you want me to go ahead and share mine yeah go for it all right cool you want to just recap what pairs you went over again just for people? yeah I just just again uh covered dxy first then au aj euro usd euro jpy NZ cat and gold. So cool. I prepared for you guys. Oh yeah. All right. Let's uh let's hop on. I'm gonna cover some more of the major pairs now. Um we're gonna start. Let me come over to UJ. So we're gonna start with UJ. We were just taking a look at this in uh in our members webinar. But as always, you know, start up on the weekly time frame like Nick. You know, we're looking at our key levels. What are they? Um for me, I have a monthly level marked up here, a weekly level marked down here. Um, overall weekly time frame, we are bearish. You know, we're below the 200 day. I know we talk a lot about 200 day moving average. What is that? That's the average of price over the last 200 days. So the current price is below the average of price the last 200 days. 
you know, so could we come back to retest that? Sure. Um, but overall, this is definitely, you know, bearish, definitely depreciating in value, US, USD, JPY right now. So let's, you know, start on the weekly. Last week's candlestick, we had this bearish candle. And then last week we formed, um, you know, a little bit of a bullish candle here, still below these moving averages, but I'd like to bump down, take a look, you know, time frame lower, see what's going on. Remember previously we had broken this level, we drag it across. We had broken this level, which was definitely a key level of structure um, last week to open, you know, or last week we closed to actually test that level again. We're still below the 200 day moving average, still below both of our, or we managed to break below both of our 18 day and eight day moving averages um, at the moment. So, you know, overall I am still bearish, even though last two days we closed bullish. Um, so let's forecast, you know, a little idea. Let's continue to bump down uh, to the four hour. Four hour time frame, as I was going over before, is actually pretty bullish, right? Key each time frame, we wanna see, you know, what, whether we're bearish or bullish, what trend, what's trending. We form these highs, form these higher lows, form these highs. This is really our initial pullback right here. We got our FIB marked again, just real quick. FIB, first bullish candle in the start of a trend you know, to the highs, so the end of a bullish candle that closes the trend or closes the push, you know, push upwards. So obviously up here we have bearish, our bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. So all this area is where the trend stopped pushing, started to pull back. Um, 61.8, you know, is right here. These are really the two main levels we look for, 38.2, 6.18. This is lined up directly with um, this four hour support level. But overall, you know, a higher time frame, I am bearish on this. So I'm not trying to trade against the, the trend personally. I'm more looking to forecast short ideas. The only way that I will short at the moment is if we do break below um, this support level right here, our four hour support, but also obviously, you know, this is a level that came to found support, came to here, found support. So if I, if I break below this level and then retest, find resistance at that 618 like on the opposite side of it um then i will look to short lower if we do you know our first day if we if we pull bullish and we close um i'll update my analysis and i'll you know forecast a new idea but just being patient right now not trying to get in at the in this range we are at a high so right now is at a good spot to double top um and to fall lower so yeah usd jpy um staying on the four hour so i'm going to move this down Let's go to NZD, USD. We'll pop up. We've had some analysis going on this now for a couple of days and NZD, USD loves to do this. It loves to, loves to form like a couple of bearish candles in a row and then really drop. Um, so I'm really looking to continue on with that right now. So pretty much up on this daily time frame, obviously we're bearish, very bearish. The key right now is that we're at this weekly level. Um, you know, where does this weekly level come from? Why is it there? Obviously, as price came into the zone, I wanted to go back in time and I wanted to see previously how price reacted. We've got resistance, support, 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 resistance, resistance, resistance. So that's why I placed that line. So back to where we are right now, daily time frame, obviously bearish, retesting the moving averages, four hour time frame. Uh, we, we actually entered a little bit of a bullish trend. We broke above this level, retested. That's why we were putting out longs. Now we're back at our weekly resistance and we're starting to break um, very minor levels of four hour support. So because of the fact that these pushes are all, you know, we wanna break down these candles a little bit further um, to see kind of the trend a little bit more clearly. So I'm gonna bump down to the one hour. Um, so to see what's going on. So basically on the one hour, as I was looking at this, I saw very clearly higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low right here. And then this high, ultimately we had this um, very minor level of structure that formed, you know, found support, pulled through the moving averages. Then we broke right here. Um, so that was sort of like a very aggressive entry opportunity. And then ultimately now what we were forecasting last week was a break below this zone this weekly support zone a retest you know retest that zone and ultimately we're breaking below this low this higher low and retest and then head lower that's pretty much what what went down is we broke below 
We retest it again. We're not predicting. We're just forecasting ideas based that's on our level. Let me just say that 61.8 looks so key. You can see that that's, that's at a structure level. If you look to the left, you've seen that there's a little yeah. support level that's been rejected multiple times. So again, you just see NU is so good for this. It just forms clear structure. So yeah, to like get that. so basically what we were looking at was break below. You know, we had this retest. We pulled back here. I know a couple of people got stopped out on this. I was saying to wait, you know, wait for the retest. You could have even shorted here, like I have this marked, and you put your stops very conservatively, conservatively above this previous uh, resistance level, support turn resistance, and you would have been good for the, to be in the trade, right? You'd be up around 60 pips now. Or you've been a little bit more aggressive, you put above these highs, you know, right here, and then you still would have been in the trade based on we pulled back, but we respected this, right? So you got to understand where you are at all times, you know, in, with structure. Um, so yeah, where are we now? Um, obviously we're in a trending market on the one hour time frame. I had my fibs marked from here to here. We retested like 78.6, whatever that level is up here, 88.6. And then we managed to break below this level. We had like a slight pullback right here. I'm just gonna move this. We had a slight pullback right here in confluence with our 200 day, with our moving average, and then we fell. So now, uh, this is where we're at. You know, this is a previous lower high. This is a low. We're finding support. What, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a pullback. Like Nick said, this 61.8 area is looking major, um, looking really good right now. So I'm gonna look at this 618 area in confluence with this resistance uh, to short. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking, to go lower, you know, first level I'm going to target is this four hour level. So this is resistance on the four hour, support on the four hour. And then ultimately, like what we originally forecasted was to get all the way down to this demand zone, all the way down to the demand zone down here. You know, drew this demand zone based on, based on this from the wick of this candle to the body of the following candle. So like that. So we're looking to get down in that area. So yeah, and you um, actually, you know, pretty bearish at the moment. Again, if things change based on this one hour, you know, say we break above this level, then I will reevaluate the trend. I will look for a break above here, retest long. Um, so just continuing to forecast ideas and uh, be patient. So that's NU. I'm going to keep that higher on my watch list because we're all the way down on the one hour. So that's definitely significant. Let's go over to GU. Um, let's start up all the way up on the weekly weekly time frame. Let's just look at structure. We were falling, 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 obviously very bearish. Had a pullback. This was a nice lower high here. Falling, falling again. Had a pullback. We retested this lower high, respected it. You know, we were getting in on shorts, all of this area fell obviously pretty significantly. Now we're just retesting these lows again. And I think it's significant to note that we formed. Um, a bullish engulfing, you know, two weeks ago, bullish engulfing, definitely buy. A last week formed, very weak, bearish candle. Um, but at the same time, we did retest this. Moving averages are pointing down. Important to note, but it started to cycle down. Again, four bullish candles in a row, and then a lot of indecision now. Um, still don't see things as clear, clearly as I'd like, but one thing I would note on this time frame is – the moving averages have crossed. They've crossed, but they're pointing down. So, you know, still a lot of bearish um, momentum. But this is a typical pattern that I'll look for right now. It's, you know, whoever could guess this, you know, try to drop it, drop it in the chat. You guys know what pattern. Yeah, what pattern is this, guys? Let me see some people in chat. Expand the chart on the right a little bit. Just give you a little more clarity. Where? Just up, up more. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah, what do you guys see? What kind of pattern is this? Who knows their patterns? Yeah, you guys know your, yeah, it's a flag. Boom. Nice, Bradley. That's my guy. Someone's paying attention. Oh, yeah. All right. Good. Flag. So, um, you know, flag continuation pattern, obviously. Um, at the moment, we're all the way kind of at this low right now. Um, if I even – let's let's bump down to the one hour and see what's going on here. Um, let's go back up to the four hour. So, at the moment, I'm going to stick on the four hour with this. This is a very minor four hour uh, structure, like key level, just based on support here, resistance here. This is also 
Um, you know, we got some psychological levels here. This touched 1.2200 pretty much on the nose and came back up. So, you know, I'm looking to break ultimately above this flag, break above the flag, and then retest long into this zone. Um, if we do have enough bearish volume to break below, I will simply look for a retest of this lower trend line, and then I will short. I'll short into this weekly level. Um, but yeah, GU, you know, I'm just kind of waiting on the four hours. So again, I'm going to move this down. Let's go over to USDCHF. I actually like what's going on with this pair um, all the way up on the weekly time frame. I think it's important. Let's start up on the monthly. So monthly, you know, just kind of a one look. Moving averages, you know, bearish, definitely bearish. You know, red over blue right now. Overall, very bearish. Um, daily time frame or weekly time frame. Let's go here. Had this bearish engulfing, but then we zoomed up based on a retest of this level, which we actually went over. Yeah, fundamentals will take over on you. Yeah, fundamentals are going to be interesting this week. We'll go over at the end with that. Um, but obviously, let's see daily time frame. You know, daily time frame bearish. We broke below this main level of, of support. Then we retested all the way up at the supply zone. We called this trade right out of the supply zone. Now we're back up in that supply zone. So there's no reason for us to be bullish unless we break above this area. We break above this zone. And even if we do, we're still below this monthly key level up here. Okay, I'm gonna draw in just a little bit of a zone to look at. Um, so we're still below this monthly you know, key level all the way up there. So when we get into that zone, you know, we're going to be cautious as to what we do. But at the same time, I want to continue to cycle down to the four hour. Let's look at the four hour. Uh, four hour time frame, we actually broke below this level of support. You know, we broke some structure. We made a new low, got my fibs on. Right now we're testing, you know, right up at this level of support, right in our supply zone. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for bearish setups. I'm going to look for bearish setups. Um, I'm going to see how it respects this zone. We do get bearish setups on the four hour. That shows me that the 30 minute is starting to break structure. And then we'll look to get in based on that fact. Um, so going to stay on the four hour with this, but this is definitely high on my list because of the fact that there's so much room to fall. And right now there's so many confirmations at this top part. Supply zone, Fibonacci, Fibonacci right now. Um, you know, previous resistance, everything we need. We just need a bearish signal. We're not just going to short because of the fuck of it. You know, we need a bearish signal, show some breaks of structure, whatever, you know, something to send us short. So that's USDCHF. I'm going to keep that higher on my list. Let's go in USD CAD. Let's go up. This one's interesting. We've been going over this the last couple weeks in a row. You know, we're in this supply zone. Previously, price came up in this area. Price has not broken out of this area above here since 2003. Obviously, conditions right now are nuts, but really, you know, we're looking to see how it respects here. Let's do some weekly candlestick analysis. Bullish candle, huge wick, bearish candle, a lot of exhaustion, failed to engulf. The next week, opened, gapped up, bullish, but then failed to do anything above this level right here. So let's go down to the daily. Daily time frame, obviously a little bit of a fall off. Respected our moving averages. More notably, respected this level of support back here. And then just a lot of indecision. We've been bullish, you know, bullish with a lot of exhaustion or bearish with a lot of exhaustion. Um, bullish, you know, a lot of exhaustion. So let's bump down to the four hour where I see things a little bit more clearly. So four hour, this is what I'm talking about. Nice transition. We got this trend line that broke. We have this support level that broke. If we take this off for now, this was our main support level, support, support, you know, and then we're finding resistance here. So we broke below that point of structure. Now we're looking for that first lower high. Um, you know, could we break right now? Could we break below on these lower time frames? Sure, we could break below. You said we should avoid low volume setups. Where is it finally? I'll go over that in a second. So we could break below uh, this level and head lower, you know, right away, or at least retest this level first. And this is what we do with our signals. Like we'll put our targets, you know, first level, 
next level, stuff like that. Or if we come up, retest this level, um, you know, I'm going to, I'll redo my analysis and be more patient and kind of see what, what goes on. So really right now, I'm just looking to, to see if it respects this. Right now we're doing, there's a lot of failing going on. You know, we had some bearish volume failed, bearish volume failed to engulf, and now we got this bullish candle. So we'll see how the market opens up. We'll see how the market opens up. You want me to answer his question, Nick? Uh, yeah, if you just scroll to the left a little bit, I see some low volume consolidation on this pair. Just scroll to the left. Okay, so yeah, you see this little area down here? All this is low volume. So like, okay, so this is a good example. Right, right at that first MA cross, it broke, or sorry, it breaks resistance, tests the support. See that morning star? Where, here? Like all this in here. Any signal that you see in here is like, well, actually that one's not too bad, but this one here where there's dojis, like see how they're like basically the size of dojis, but you still could consider that like a morning star because it's 50 what, this? the third candle covers 50% of the first candle. That's, that doesn't count. You can't, that's invalid. That's what we mean by avoid low volume setup. So like it, sh it should be very clear when you see a morning star or an evening star or an engulfing or exhaustion. Anytime that there's low volume, it's probably a period of consolidation. So you may actually be inside a pattern or, you know, price action may be in a pullback or, or a retracement rather. And, or it might be making, might be getting ready to like loading up to get to a bigger move. So just stay yeah. away from those low volume. It's also not the best chart right now, um, to be honest, to be looking at, because, because of the fact that it appreciated so much. Um, but at the same time, like this is kind of, a decent example here. I'm not sure if this, you know, again, what is an evening star? It's got to cover 50%. This is 73. This whole candle is 143. So this just about covers it. But you see the volume on this isn't bad. The volume's good. As Nick was talking about, um, if you're getting, if you're getting, I guess, similar to down here, what you were just referencing, like these yeah. candles. Yeah, exactly. If you're getting like one, two, three, like there's no volume there. It doesn't mean anything. Right. These are just That's dojis. Right. Wait for that next confirmation candle. Boom. A right. lot of volume. So, so basically, if you're looking at like, let's say if you're looking at a one hour morning star, there's, there's micro levels that are being broken in there. And that's, you know, it's breaking those very, very lower time frame levels. But if there's no volume, like he just showed, nothing's breaking nothing's happening at all it's moving like a couple pips and that's not significant enough to then count as confirmation to then add up to make a trade based off of it just doesn't make sense hopefully yeah. that answered your question you know morning stars and evening stars are definitely very effective patterns because basically what's happening you know for a morning star there's obviously a bearish push and then there's a doji, so there's some consolidation at the bottom there. And then you 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 know have the bullish. The reason why you want to cover half is because as it covers half, like Nick said, if you're on the one hour, that means the 15 minute, there's gonna be some minor breaks of structure there. Or even lower, even, even the five yeah. minute potentially. Like the five minute, yeah, whatever. Yep. Um, so let's continue on to GBP JPY. Um Again, let's start, you know, up on this monthly. Monthly time frame, red over blue, definitely bearish. We're right at a weekly resistance level, which is something to note of. Last month's candle closed with a hell of exhaustion. Um, but again, the market conditions are crazy right now. Let's bump down to the weekly. Weekly overall structure. Look at this trend line, bearish. This was huge trades that we took. Bearish, right? Now, and that's because we're up on the weekly time frame, guys. Daily, daily time frame, obviously bearish. You know, last five days or seven days or so has been bullish. Moving averages have crossed um, upwards. Um, but at the same time, we're still below this key level of resistance. We're really just looking for our first lower high. We weren't able to respect anything at 38.2, mainly because there was no, no major levels here to respect. At this 50% level, we do have this major level of resistance um, that we're finding some rejection on. But at the moment, nothing um, too significant. So basically what I will do, I'll continue to cycle down time frames like, so I, until I see a trend a little bit more clearly. Obviously on this four hour, we broke this level, formed a new high, power low, and then just a lot of consolidation, a lot of consolidation, like continuing to climb up and nothing major 
as we approach this level. Um, so again, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just bump down to a time frame where I then see structure a little bit more clearly on this pair. One hour, let's look left. One hour, very clearly high, higher, low, high, definitely higher, low, high, higher, low, right here. And then we had these minor levels that started to form up in this area. Um, and that's pretty much what we broke. That's pretty much uh, what we broke in this area. We started to break um, some minor levels and we came back to retest them. So we formed this low based on the break of this, formed this low, came up 618, you know, fell off of that level, wasn't ready yet, came back up to retest, you know, really a double top in this area. We bump up a little bit. Rejection again. Um, so really what I'm looking for, I'm not looking to just short right now because of the fact of where we are. We want levels to put as stops. Um, if we break below the 200 day and we do something like this, and I'll take more of like a breakout style entry if this really does happen. If we break below here, and it'll definitely be a little bit more risky. If we break below here, we get like a little bit of a minor retest of this considering the volume. You know, I'll look to short. Um, but if not, if not, I will not long anything until we break all the way above back on this four hour. Until we break all the way above this, we got the 200 day here. So overall very bearish and we retest, then I will long, right? So I'm waiting on this four hour. On this four hour, if I get the break and retest, then I will long. So GJ short term, definitely looking bearish at the moment. Um, whether we're gonna short, we're waiting for either a break here, another retest, triple top here, you know, rejection at this level. Just definitely in a key level. Like this is going to be a pair that I monitor pretty closely along with GJ. I have a small account. Man. This is good to grow. Do I like this? Um, this is GJ, UJ, and NU are going to be the main pairs I'm looking at earlier in the week. Obviously, went over GU, USAF, and uh, UCAD. I have a small account. Do you want to send me to stick to this? No, you want I mean, to stay consistent with your Yeah, business. I mean, realistically, you know, you see a lot of people do different things. If you have a small account and you're, you have skill and your aim is to grow, if your account is $50, then if you risk, you're realistically, if you risk over 2%, you're willing to lose the account. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're now willing you, to lose. Go ahead. You're go ahead. willing to lose the whole account. As soon as you hit 10%, 20%, 30%. I mean, the goal for you is to take trades without shaking in your boots. Exactly. Now, there's one way you can add more trades that, so at any one time, you want to have 2% risk max. Now, if you can make, if you can have five trades open and still only risk 2%, that's good. And what I mean by that is, if you're in a trade and it's up, let's say 40 pips, it's at a one to one and you move your stop loss to break even. Now there's no risk. Now you freed up that 2%. So now you can go start looking at other trades. Yes, you're still managing this one trade that's making you potentially or minimum 4% because two to one risk to reward. You can go take that freed up 2% now and go apply to another trade. And if that one hits one to one, again, move stop loss to break even, you freed up that 2% again. Now you have two active trades that can potentially minimum, uh, you know, give you 4% each and now risk free and so on and so on and so on. Um, you can do it that way. And that's how a lot of people have multiple positions open with a small account whilst maintaining risk, uh, but while maintaining a risk of only 2%. So that's, that you can do, but you can't, you shouldn't be taking five trades at once, all 2% because now you have 10% in the market. Yep. You, know, you know what so I mean? One thing that we are going to do um, pretty much this week only is we are going to, just give me one second. You can actually expand on that idea, Nick. Just give me one second. Let's see. And uh, I think Beppo wanted you to cover, you want to just cover Euro GBP really quickly? Euro GBP? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just pull it up and then I'm going to close off. Sure. I'll just do a full analysis on it. Sure. Because obviously the market's about to open yep. in like three minutes. So we're, we're going to go quick here. Did he have a specific question? about it or just oh, uh, maybe just, right, overall, just overall sentiment. yeah so if you want to do commentary as i'm marking this up that's fine 
I'll just do Let's this. See. Let's see. So we're looking for simplicity always, guys. We're just going to, you know, dice up the chart. First thing we're doing is looking for those SR levels. Right now I'm on the monthly. I have the entire amount of price action back to 90, 93 in view. Okay, so this is this chart is as old as me. June 93, let's go. 26 years old, of, 26 years of price action right here in front of us. Let's take that. 26 years. Yeah, so I'm looking for overlaps of key areas. Right now, that looks like an overlap. This looks like a pretty good area. And notice it's a whole number, 84.50. Whole number, guys. Psychological level, it just lines up. This is our first monthly, okay? Let's identify our second monthly. Notice how I'm staying near where price action is now. This square here, this last few years, this is the most recent price action. I don't need to be looking for monthlies down here. Price action is not coming down here anytime soon. No. So I'm just looking for this area, right? So where's the next potential one? There's a little overlap here I can see. This one looks pretty good. I'm gonna do this one. Let's see if this makes sense. 88.5, bit of an overlap, touch, overlap, overlap, touch. I like it, good enough for me. And again, these levels, we're not expecting price action to stop on a dime. It's more so the area, right? So let's see what this is here, All right? About 400 pips, this one's actually pretty close. What is this swing here? So this actually, it moves a good amount. Yeah, it moves a good amount. Let me see something here real quick. This is an overlap. I like this down here too. Hold on, I'm gonna do it this way instead. And I'll explain why in a second. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so again, Nick's just doing a little top-down analysis. Um, you know, as Nick's doing this, we're about to cover after this. We have a special going on this week. We're gonna, if you wanna trade with us, we're going to do live sessions Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They're going to be free. They're going to be in the morning. We're in New Jersey in the USA, so we're Eastern time. So they're either going to be at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. Um, and, yeah, we're going to trade live. But also, we're doing our signals package, which includes fundamental updates every day, which are really important right now. And what that is from us is basically everyone throws around these job reports that come around every day stuff like that. But what we do is we provide explanations to those news events that are coming out. Um, you know, we give you some background from a fundamental trader that works with us. They give you some background on what these th these events mean. Um, and we'll also update you with some critical events. So this month we are doing it um, $1. It's literally $1 to get in. It's for the first month. And normally it's 75 per month. Um, so if you guys want to get in, you want to, you know, check out the fundamentals, check out our signals, check out our trading plan, and also a full fundamental course, it's going to, it's going to be $1. I'm going to drop the link to that um, after this live session. And you guys can, you know, decide if you want to try it out for the month. You can obviously cancel anytime you guys want, but, um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to go over that. You know, Nick's obviously breaking down Euro GBP. And uh, all the pairs that we went over are pretty much the pairs we trade. Um, we don't necessarily go outside of, of the pairs we trade because it's important for you guys to focus on pairs that you've tested, that you've experienced with, you know, because as, as you trade the same pair, when those setups present themselves, you're going, to be, you're going to be confident executing on them very, very easily. Um, so so as sounds good. As you're doing this, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm just going to mark this up. You go ahead. Do you got to do? So this, again, is going to be, you know, the package. It's $1. It's signals, fundamentals, trading plan, live sessions, and um, the full fundamental course. Real quick, what is inside? You know, what am I talking about? With this, uh, these are the fundamental updates that we put out. You know, market overview every week we'll wrap up with the market what's going on fundamentally I know someone said something about GBP you know that'll be covered in here and then economic calendar for the week so this is that broad spectrum of events that goes on and then as the week goes on we're gonna break those down for you every day 
and we're going to put out um, a more in-depth analysis so you guys can start to learn. And then inside the course um, is 10, 10 indicators uh, of fundamentals. So basically, as you're tr starting to become more of a fundamental trader, because like Nick does, like Nick watches, you watch Bloomberg TV realistically almost every day. Yep. Right. So as you're watching, you know, Bloomberg TV every day, like doing that, it's important to be aware as to what's going on. So, you know, again, you're going to get the fundamental analysis. You're going to get the signals, um, which do come out and you're going to get premium analysis. Um, so yeah, you know, if you guys want in, I'm going to drop the link after this and I'm going to drop it in the Forex channel. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much all from me. How about you want to, uh, cause let's, Let's conclude the session unless you're you're done because I could say you could drop your analysis after this. I'm I'm almost done. I'm just wanna I'm just gonna cover the just what this pair is doing. I'm not gonna break down to a trade setup. Okay, uh, you can uh you can share your screen. Okay. Let's I just wanna show you guys the basics of this here. Okay, so the thing with Euro GP GBP is that it's it's ranging. It's been ranging for quite a while. So that means the Euro and the pound have been fighting for this, this freaking range right here. And it's actually been really annoying because see how many fake outs? Every time the Euro goes to appreciate versus the pound, it gets shot right, it gets shot down, right? It goes to fly and gets shot, boom, fake out. It goes to fly, break, uh, it gets shot down, fake out. Again, shot down. So this is the true range here, like right between this month, these monthly zones, just outside of it. Again, remember, price action is not gonna stop exactly on the monthly every time. It's more so the area. So the fact that, we know this is a monthly, you know, it goes by, it goes past it a hundred pips and then pulls back. So like, this is a huge demand zone, right? This is a huge supply zone. And this is the range that price action is filling. So let's go ahead and move on to our daily. So I've gone ahead and marked the, um, the trends here. So the, the monthly is super bullish, right? The weekly is ranging. That's what we're seeing here. This huge that I just talked about. That's what's ranging. But now we're seeing this, this is bullish. This is the daily trend here, right? So like, forget all the price action to the left. We're looking at the daily. This here, this is the daily trend. This is bullish. And then this is the four hour. If we were to drop down, we would see just bearish movement. So that's the four hour, right? So from here, I just wanna throw a fib on this. I wanna find where structure formed, right? Hit the 23.6 and continue higher. And now we're right at the 61.8. So this is a pretty key area. This little level right here is holding and it seems to be very important. So let's go ahead and mark this as structure, right? Let's just get rid of the fibs to keep, keep the chart clean. We know this is the 61.8, right? So two potential scenarios, either it's going to reject or it's going to drop. So just to, just at the very basis of this analysis, you know, we want to see this, which you would target out here, right? Or you wanna look for a break and a retest, and then we would target down towards our monthly support. Again, there's there are some other levels in here if you're using FIBS, if you were dropped down to a four hour, uh, you know, that's all very much in play as well, but this is just a daily analysis from my perspective. This is what I see happening right now. Again, this volume is absolutely insane, but this is just the two, from where price action is now, these are the two setups. Look, it just gapped higher, right? So this is what we could potentially see. Uh, if you were to short, I personally think this is gonna, I like the idea of this dropping, uh, right? You'd get in on a lower high. We wanna see some consolidation. Consolidation is honestly your friend. It gives you a chance to uh, you know, identify patterns, uh, get in on a good trade. And then is also, as well as form structure to you know, place a decent stop loss at and protect yourself. So this is what I see happening as one scenario. Break lower, right? and then target towards the bottom of this range. I mean, that's all I can recommend right now, considering how crazy this range has been, how crazy price action has been following this range. Uh, it's just like, it's just bouncing top, bottom, top, bottom. Oh yeah. So, uh, so yeah. that's, that's, um, that's pretty much it. I dropped the link for you guys. If you want to get in again, it's literally $1, literally $1. So if you guys want to get in, um, you can use the link in the chat or I'm going to post this. The, along with the recording, this is obviously recorded. Um, so I'm gonna post the recording in the chat as well. And uh, let's, you know, take a look at the markets. The market just opened up. So let's all get on. Best of luck to all y'all trading this week. And uh, link, don't forget the link to the fibs. Yeah, I'll send the webinar for the fibs too.
Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Yep. This was a long one. Catch you guys next time. Peace.